How do you just forget you have one of the rarest cars in the world sitting under a pile of boxes in storage? The barn find is the ultimate dream of the gearhead. That one in a million chance that you'll wander through a barn, garage, or storage unit and come across a piece of automotive history. A car so rare that even in rusty and dusty condition, it would bring six figures at an auction. For most of us, it's the only way we'd have that brush with greatness. Let's look at 10 people who found big bucks hiding in barns. The $4.53 million Bugatti 57C Today, Bugatti is known for making fast, luxurious automobiles that are both ridiculously expensive and exclusive. Atore Bugatti's original brand was also known for fast, luxurious, expensive, and exclusive cars. One of the best known and most desired is the Type 57. Imagine the family of Dr. Harold Carr's surprise when, after his death, they discovered his 1937 Bugatti Type 57 Adelante Coupe, one of 17, in all original condition. Dr. Carr had bought the rare machine from its original owner, racer Earl Howe, in 1955 and parked it in the 60s. The car went to auction unrestored and fetched a tidy $4.53 million. Los Cobra Daytona found in storage unit, bought for $1,000, sold at auction for $4 million. When Shelby hit the limits that his Cobra Roadster could accomplish, Carroll had Peter Brock design a coupe body for his Giant Slayer. The results were amazing, with the Daytona Coupe dominating the 1965 season, just in time for Shelby to have his focus shift to the overall win with the GT40. The first of six, and the only one built by Shelby in America, with the other five assembled in Italy, also went on to set a land speed record before it shuffled hands, finding itself in the possession of legendary music producer and hair farmer Phil Spector. When Spectre found the car too much to handle on surface streets, he sold it to his bodyguard, George Brand, for $1,000, who would later give it to his daughter, Donna O'Hara, who took the car off the road for good. The lost Daytona became a thing of legend among collectors, mostly because O'Hara kept denying she still had the car. Sadly, she took her own life, and it turned out she did indeed still have it. But now, the car was rare and valuable, and the car that was traded hands for change was part of a legal battle between O'Hara's parents, a childhood friend, and even Phil Spector himself. The lucky winner was her friend, Kurt Goss, but the parents had already sold the car for $4 million and were forced to give Goss $800,000. Chassis number CSX2287 now sits on display in the Simeon Automobile Museum in Philadelphia. $3.75 million Mustang from Bullet Every gearhead has a fondness for the Steve McQueen police thriller, Bullet. Not for the plot about a witness that McQueen has to make people believe is dead in order to find his would-be killers, but because of the car chase between McQueen and his Highland Green 1968 Shelby GT390 and a black Dodge Charger through the streets of San Francisco, terrifying a small green beetle just trying to navigate the steep San Francisco streets. Two Mustangs were prepared for the movie, the hero car and the jump car. The hero car went to Robert Keeman, who bought it for $3,500. Refusing to sell it even to McQueen himself, the car was used as a commuter by his wife until clutch troubles took it off the road in 1980. In 2020, Keeman's son, Sean, decided to finally let the car cross the auction block, starting at his dad's buying price of $3,500, but ending at $3.74 million which was a record for a Mustang for six whole months until it was outdone by a racing Shelby driven by Ken Miles. The jump car's fate was even more perilous. Deemed unrestorable at the time, it was sold for scrap but saved from the record by fate. It was discovered in a Mexican junkyard where it was bought to be converted into a replica of Eleanor from the Gone in 60 Seconds remake before a VIN search revealed it already had legitimate movie prominence. Now painted white, the jump car is undergoing a restoration to match its million-dollar co-star. 1952 Pegaso Z102 Million Dollar Find Sometimes you don't know what you have because the car is just that rare. Like the Pegaso Z102 discovered by Tom Cotter. Tom Cotter literally wrote the book on barn finds with his tomb of automotive discoveries, The Cobra and the Barn. He's taken his automotive archaeology skills to television with his show Barn Find Hunters, where he discovers more rare cars lost to the world. 
One of those finds was a car so rare that not many people have heard of it. The 1952 Pegaso Z102 was a Spanish car with a French body, and a powerful V8 that, in its most bestial configuration, made the Pegaso the fastest production car in the world at the time, with a top speed of 151 miles per hour. Only 85 Z102s were built, as the car proved too heavy and expensive to race. Cotter found this million-dollar example in a Southern California garage, largely disassembled. 1964 Ferrari 340 America goes from $200 to possibly millions. You'd think something like a 1964 Ferrari 340 America with Le Mans history would be something sacred, parked in air-conditioned garages and wiped down with special cloths. That's now, but once upon a time, the sports cars from Marinello weren't considered sacred. Chassis 0202A retired from Le Mans Racing, placing fifth overall, and was sent to America where it raced extensively, having its tricky V12 replaced with a Chevy V8. When the body was damaged, a Devon body was put in its place. Now in disguise as an American special Devon race car, the incognito Ferrari was sold in 1990 for $200 with the intent to become a dragster. Instead, it was sold again as a Devon for $26,912. That's when the new owner found out what was under the fiberglass special body. The new owner, Tom Shaughnessy, enlisted none other than Ferrari themselves to bring the car back to its original state. In August, a 4.1-liter V12 Le Mans racer will go on auction, where racing Ferraris regularly fetch millions of dollars. $16 million Ferrari 250 from a failed car museum Those million-dollar dreams are fed by the tales of other Ferrari barn finds, like the Ferrari 250 GT short wheelbase California Spider from the notorious Bailon Collection. The Ferrari was one of 100 classics left to gather dust in the French countryside until experts from the Art Curio auction house discovered the collection. The Ferrari is one of only 50 ever made, itself being number 23. Road and Track reports the final hammer price of the Ferrari at $18.1 million, more than the entire collection was thought to have fetched. The $2.5 million 300SL Goldwig Alloy Some cars just stand out as high watermarks in both beauty and function, and find their way on just about everybody's wish list. One of those is the Mercedes 300SL Goldwing, Mercedes production race car effort of the 50s. The iconic gullwing doors were not an affectation. Chassis stiffness insisted that the hinges for the doors be moved from the side of the car to the top to give the car both extra rigidity and one of the most iconic looks in automotive history. Regular models fetch top dollar at auctions, which makes the 29 alloy bodied racing models even more desirable. Chassis number 21, the last undiscovered example, was found behind piles of old computer equipment by 300SL alloy expert Rudy Konicek. At the time, in 2011, alloy body 300SLs were trading for $2.5 million, though examples have been trading hands for twice that at auction in recent years. $10 million for the Auto Union Type D lost in Russia as should be clear by now, not every manufacturer considered conserving their rare examples of history at the time. That's certainly true of Auto Union, now Audi, and their 1939 Type D. The Type D was Auto Union's rear-engine Grand Prix cars designed by Dr. Ferdinand Porsche before his name started appearing on his own cars. The twin supercharged 485 horsepower Beast was capable of 205 miles per hour and were the most advanced cars of their time. Unfortunately, that time was 1939, their early days of World War II. After the war, the car ended up in Russian hands as Auto Union's headquarters were in eastern Germany. In the early 2000s, one of the Type Ds to survive surfaced for auction with an estimated price of $10 million. In 2012, Audi finally bought the car, joining five other examples of the historic machines. The Lost Jaguar E-Type Lightweight Mercedes isn't the only one with the production racing icon. The Jaguar E-Type is so gorgeous, it's one of only two cars to be displayed at the Museum of Modern Art. To take the rolling work of art racing, Jaguar put a few E-Types on a diet, using aluminum bodies and 315 horsepower XK6 power plants. The cars were meant to take on Ferrari's all-conquering 250, but rather than running the cars themselves, they were sold to privateers. Eventually, all but one resurfaced as historic racing became a thing. 
This example was sold to Gel Quivale, which won against the other lightweight at Sebring Run by Cunningham. After another race at Laguna Seca, it was sold to another privateer with big dreams, RAF face Howard Guidovlinko, who planned to run it at the 24 Hours of Le Mans. Despite accumulating spares for the big race, it never made it. Instead, it suffered in storage until Guido Blanco's death. When his family tried to sell what they thought was a regular E-Type, the flood of offers caused them to have the car inspected when it was discovered to be the missing lightweight. The car, bought by Guido Blanco for $5,000, was sold for just short of a million before it was restored and returned to Laguna Seca for the Monterey Historics 37 years after its first race there. Shelby Cobra 427 and a Ferrari 275 GTB sell for $4.5 million. Most of us would dream of finding just a Cobra or a Ferrari, but once again, Tom Cotter shows us how it's done when he found both a Shelby Cobra 427 and a Ferrari 275 GTB. The Ferrari was a long nose alloy with a twin cam instead of the quad cam engine in the racing models to make it a manageable street car. The Cobra 427 actually housed the racing 428 engine in it. The cars were sealed up in 1991, when the owner's preferred mechanic died in a motorcycle racing incident. Tom Cotter was contacted by the owner's friend to reintroduce the cars to the world, and the pair sold for a total of $4.59 million. The real dream is to have something happen like the guy who bought a storage unit for less than $100 only to find Wet Nelly the Lotus Esper that was converted to a submarine for the movie The Spy Who Loved Me. We can't all be Tom Cotter.